This is a method of substitution that you can use to uh, take integrals, uh, whether it's indefinite integral or definite integral. So basically this follows after the form of, say there's a, a function that's given like this, but essentially follows after this form of, meaning it's going to be a really complex function that is represented by f at x. And so you can see that it follows after the form of uh, chain rule. So this follows after the form of chain rule, where you take the derivative of the outside function and then take the derivative of the one that's inside the function. So whenever you can spot chain rule taking place in the given function within the integral, then you can apply this method of substitution. So by the word substitution, what it means is that we are letting this complex function g at x to be a simple variable. So we are letting u be g at x. Then du will be g x and d at x. And so what this will end up being is integral of f derivative u and this is represented by du so we simply have du which following after the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus we have f at u and uh, because it's indefinite integral that we are doing this is our first derivative and so it's anti-derivative of this and u and constant factor but if we didn't take this route then what we would have is uh, here we would have f g at x and plus c. By u, we set u to equal to g at x. So even though you use substitution, you still get the same answer. This is the basic principle of the rule of substitution. But for indefinite integral, when we have to work with definite integral, we will be assigned an interval to work with. And this form will still follow. So there are two, there are two ways to calculate this. First method is is that you just proceed and then find the indefinite integral disregarding these and then finding the expression which we have here. So we will have f g at x, we will eventually have this expression and we will plug in a and b using the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus to have f g at b minus f g at a. The second method which is a preferred method, is to use substitution. So by letting the variable, simpler variable, u to be g at x, we will be left with um, an integral expression where we have g at a and g at b. I'll explain this further. And the function that we will just have is f and u du, which will be f u but the interval has not been changed, g at b and g at a, so that uh, simplifies to substituting this into where u is, we've got g at b minus f g at a. So what, what the reason why we have this is because the integral is over the x, meaning these values are x values. x goes from a to b. But because now we are doing, taking the integral with respect to u as opposed to uh, d, with respect to x, then these will have to align with the variable u. But u is g at x, so these values a and b will have to go into where x is. Therefore, u will now change to u will go from g at a and g at b. Therefore, the interval has changed now to uh, this and that. That is an important thing to remember. So the good thing, the reason why this is the preferred method is that it is simpler because once you deal with a simpler um, function, uh, taking the antiderivative is a lot simpler. You don't because uh, the interval has already taken into account the change, the interval that associates with this function g at a, we don't have to bother to plug back into the function, the original function uh, in place of u, and then proceeding with a regular interval a to b. We just need to keep the substituted value u as is, disregard plugging the original function back in and just plug in this modified interval and that gives us the same answer. So these two are the key things you want to remember for indefinite integral indefinite integral.
Another thing that will help you is uh, symmetrical behaviors. So for even functions, the symmetrical behavior follows this pattern. So even function means where x is negative is equal to where x is positive. I will illustrate with an example. So what this means is that we have a graph, say for example, some kind of uh, symmetrical uh, even function. When it says even function, what that means is it is symmet symmetrical over the vertical y-axis. There are symmetrical graphs where it's sort of like this. This is not y-axis, therefore this is not called an even function. It is not an even function. Only when it's over the y-axis, it is defined as the even function. Only then, when x is negative and when x is positive, they are symmetrical over this line. Here, x is both negative or, or vice versa. So even function, given this property, if we have an integral going from, say, minus a to a, it is going to be exactly symmetrical. Let's say this is uh, minus a and this is a. So the distance from the y-axis is the same. Then if we have a function that is an even function, this can be likened to taking the area of the right side only, but twice of that. So it's going to go from 0 to a and f at x, d at x. This can simplify some of the uh, questions that you have to face. When it comes to odd functions, this is even function. There was also what's known as the odd function. Odd function means when you have a graph it is going to take symmetrical behavior in terms of rotation. So the rotation must take place with respect to the origin. There are graphs where rotation takes place that is not with respect to the origin. Say, for example, like this. This is not the origin. Therefore, this is not an even function, odd function. So odd function states that when you have f at x minus x, that is equal to minus f at x. What that means is Let's take this part, which is where x is negative, and this is where x is positive. So here it's down under. That's basically equal to taking the right side but vertically flipping it over because of this negative sign that comes out to the front. So this will be flipped over vertically, and it will lie here. So it's going to be the same function. So even function, no, odd function follows after. If we have minus a to a, say we are going from that's minus a and this is a, then they will cancel each other because the area under here is exactly the same as the area above. But remember, the integral is the net of all the values. So this will be negative and this will be positive and they will offset each other by exact same amount. So having taking integral over that interval will give the value of zero. So sometimes uh, noting these two char uh, characteristics of symmetrical behaviors uh, helps you when you solve complex uh, in Integrals. So just as a recap, keep in mind of the substitution. You want to look for some kind of a chain rule that's taking place, then you can use substitution rule. And so um, indefinite integral, you just remember to put the C to represent the entire family, and remember to substitute back in um, what you have assigned u to b, which is g at x. So this must be the final answer when they're asking for indefinite integral. When it's definite integral, preferred method is the second method where change the intervals and then proceed with the substitution. You don't have to switch back and eventually you will get the same answer as if you would have taken the harder route, which is to take the antiderivative of this. With respect, you can use substitution too, but you will be switching back in. So we will be coming from here and then plugging in a and b's. Uh, either way, they give you the same answer, but you will see as you try these questions the second method is much more preferred.